Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's see how to add an Axios interceptor when working with React Query. Now let me point out that React Query has nothing to do with Axios interceptor. However, when using Axios for network requests, it is pretty common to have a base URL, the bearer token in the header, custom error handling, etc. So I want to show you how to go about it as I'm pretty sure you might have to do something similar when building a React app with React Query. The first thing I'm going to do is create a utils folder. So within the source folder, utils. Within this folder, I'm going to create a new file called axiosutils.js. Within the file, First, we are going to import Axios from Axios. Next, we are going to create an Axios client. So const client is equal to axios.create. We are going to specify an object and set the base URL. And this is going to be the JSON server URL. So HTTP localhost port 4000. Next, we are going to define and export a function that wraps all Axios requests. So export const request, and this is equal to a function. The function accepts all the options that Axios accepts. So we are going to specify an object and spread options. Within the function, we set an auth bearer token. So client dot defaults dot headers dot common dot authorization is equal to bearer token. Of course, here token is the string token, but in your app, you might probably fetch it from local storage. Next, we define the success callback. So const success gets response and returns the same. Similarly, the error callback. Const on error, and this should be on success. So on error is going to get hold of the error. Now the implementation depends on your application. So I'm just going to leave a comment. Optionally catch errors and add additional logging here. Perhaps you could also redirect to the login page if let's say status code is 401. Just make sure to return the error at the end. Finally, we return the client, passing in the options and attaching the callbacks. So dot then on success dot catch on error. We now have our interceptor ready. For every request, the base URL would be localhost port 4000 and the bearer token would be present in the header. For every response, we also have additional logic that can be run if there is an error. Let's now make use of this in our superheroes query and mutation. In use superheroes data.js, Instead of Axios, import the request function we have just created. So import request from dot dot slash utils slash Axios utils. Next, for the query, return request. We're going to specify one option, which is the URL. And this is going to be slash superheroes. Similarly, for the mutation, we're going to return request and options. We're going to specify URL, which is slash superheroes, method, which is going to be post, and the data, which is going to be hero. Let's now save the file and head to the browser. Navigate to RQ superheroes, and we see the list of heroes. Add a new hero and the list is updated. 
our query and mutation continue to work as expected. But if you take a look at the network tab, every request would have the correct URL and the bearer token attached. So this is pretty much how you add an Axios interceptor and work with React Query. All right, with that, we come to the end of the series on React Query. What I have covered in the series is pretty much what I had to implement at work. So they all are practical use cases that you might also have to eventually implement. Having said that, there are a few more features and APIs that React Query provides. I would recommend you visit the documentation for more details. All right then, thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed the series, please do leave a like and share the playlist with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to also subscribe to the channel and until next time, take care.